Hello, I'm Pastor Dave, and this is our pre-recorded sermon for Sunday, November 14th, 2021. Can't believe this year has gone by so fast. This sermon is based on the Gospel of Mark, chapter 13, verses 1 through 8. And I would encourage you to read those verses before we begin. But let us pray. Almighty God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be worthy in your sight. Amen. At the time when I was writing this sermon, it was the day after Election Day. And by the time you see this, by the time I deliver this, it's going to be about a good 10 days since the polls were closed. And what's always interesting, especially in the last several election cycles, is how many polls and experts were wrong. And this happens for reasons, and that's not the point of this sermon. But what is interesting is people's reaction to that. For some, it's concern and dismay that the polls weren't right and that their preferred candidate did not win. And some go off that everything is going to be ruined, which gets overblown. Conversely, others are absolutely ecstatic and see this as a forebearer of better things to come and start to truly celebrate the change that is coming, which, in fairness of taking everybody off, is also overblown. Now, this may come from my time in college where I studied history, political science, and economics, but I know from the long view of history, most elections aren't really that influential. There's only very few that had dramatic changes in the world. I mean, one example that we can pull from American history would be 1860, when Abraham Lincoln won the presidency, which sparked the, the secession crisis leading into the Civil War. That is an earth-shattering election. Most are not. More often than not, everything just continues on. There might be little tweaks here and there, but we typically don't have any grand overarching changes. But don't tell people on TV that. Depending on their viewpoint and what channel they're on, and I guess this also counts for many on the internet, this is either the election was either the worst thing that could possibly happen or it's going to be the earth shattering event that will change everything. What's more interesting is how we deal with that, how we act and how it impacts us, because that really tells us much about our faith and the consequences it has for our faith. Now, there's something I have to say as we get into this, and it's one of those Pastor Dave obvious statements, something we all know, but from time to time we need reminded of. And that is, people are imperfect and fallible. Since we had the opening example of politics, look at all those polls that get things wrong, especially in the last decade. But it's not just in that aspect of this world that this occurs. I mean, there are practical sides of this too. I mean, would anyone really say that they're perfect? I mean, for some people, they're just flat out liars and dishonest people. And... They seek more to do harm to benefit themselves than anything else. But beyond that, sometimes we're, we make mistakes, we're imperfect. And I can be honest in this. I forget things. And even sometimes I write notes. You can especially see it on Sunday mornings. I'll scribble a note now and again. And it's oftentimes meant to remind me of something. But then there's always a chance that, one, I can't read my horrible handwriting. Or two, I forget where I put the note. And oftentimes I'll find it the next Sunday. And most of this is perfectly harmless stuff, but it is an imperfection. And it shows my own fallible nature and the fallible nature and imperfect nature of humanity. And it's something we all deal with. So I, we can remember that people are not perfect. And we should be very cautious about putting our faith in people because they will let us down. Even the people who have great responsibility in this world will be let down. But when we look at the nature of people, this affects 
other parts of this world, especially institutions and other entities, because institutions are created by humans, not God. They're also made up of people. Now, when I say this, keep in mind, the universal church that is created by God, headed by Christ, is perfect. How we've broken up that universal church probably is not. And honestly, I'll just say it, it's not. But this goes into many other aspects and organizations. All these aspects of life and organizations we interact with fall under the, under the same boat of being imperfect. This affects it all. Schools are not perfect. They're created by people, staffed by people. Governments are not perfect. It's full of people, and I doubt I'm going to get any pushback on that. Denominations and local churches were not perfect. We're created by people and full of sinful people. Businesses are created by man. They're not perfect. They're not infallible. This is just the nature of things we make and create. They're never perfect. The institutions are not perfect. And I'll be honest, I've yet to encounter the perfect church, or the perfect committee, or the perfect school, the perfect system of government. None are perfect. But yet, in many ways, we keep putting our faith and trust in these things. And... It's almost mind-boggling knowing that they're not perfect and people aren't perfect. We place a lot of faith and trust in them that might be misplaced. And I have to wonder, some of this is not just for the sheer fact that we can see them, touch them, interact with them. They're tangible. God oftentimes is not. But we see people. We can talk with people. We can hear people. We can see an institution in a building with people in and out. We can see products that are made. And I think that's easier for us to understand. I mean, think of Israel at the base of Mount Sinai. They were at the base of the mountain, home to God. Moses went up in the mountain. The smoke, the lightning, the thunder, evidence of the presence of God were visible and could be seen and heard, but yet they created a golden calf to worship. Because in many ways... It's easier for them to worship something that could be seen than what could not. And it fits in with the Gospel of Matthew, or the Gospel of Mark in chapter 13. They bring up how great the temple is. The temple was where God was in the Holy of Holies. It's a visible symbol of God's presence amongst the people. But it's still a building. A building that even Christ knew wouldn't stand that much longer. It was torn down in the 70s A.D., but it was a center of what's important for them. And this really reminds us of a challenge that we see in these eight verses from Jesus of remembering where our faith should be and taking the challenge that we don't fall into worshiping idols inadvertently or to whether it's a person or a thing because unlike God, we can see that person right in front of us. We can see them with our own eyes. And we understand them more. Because in many ways, the nature of God is one of those things that can be problematic for people. And this is in part because God works in his own time and can see more than us. We can make the comments of praying out to God and not having our prayers answered. And part of this, I'd say, makes me wonder if it's more the fact that we don't always see what God sees. We don't understand God's timing. And sometimes we have our own expectations of how things should be answered when God answers them in a different way. And sometimes we're impatient because we're still imperfect and sometimes don't see our limit, <laughs> the limits to our lives. And this is a challenge in our faith that can sometimes call, lead us to put our faith in others. It's one of the things that has been discussed in this world, that politics is the new religion. Part of this idea of religion being, or politics being the new religion, is something that's discussed in part because of the challenges it presents. 
looking as a pastor, I typically have people for one hour a week, two at most, if there's a Bible study going on. Cable News has people for hours every single day. It's hard to compete with that. And it's not just, that's one example. Think of sports and how much time people spend watching football since we're in football season or watching TV vegging or watching movies. Oftentimes we place our faith in people or entities or we start to worship other things because that's where our attention is. And there's effects to this. And this isn't really earth shadow, shattering. And there's many examples we can pull from this, but think of the reaction people have when elections don't go their way or when their team loses. There's so many ways people really react and are very emotional who don't act the same when it comes to God. And I think this really impacts us when we place our faith in organizations, people, ideologies more than in God. And it's sometimes hard to break our way from that, because if we profess our faith in Jesus Christ, Christ should be at the center. Not that every little thing we do every second of the day falls in line with that, saying we can't read or watch a movie or watch sports or anything else. But we should be more emotionally involved with God than something else. So what do we do with this? Really, the first thing is we should be on guard for the false teachers and idols that will fail. Christ is not going to fail us. God is not going to fail us. But there are many things that lead us astray. There are things that demand our attention, things that we will obsess over. And there are people that are pushing that. The people who say this is how one should live their life, that maybe we shouldn't be doing. There are things that we maybe shouldn't be involved with. And some of this is also just realizing that people will fall short, people will fail, and some of these entities will never meet our expectations, nor do they want to. But think about what would change if we kept our faith more in Christ and obsessed more over Christ than on all these other things in the world. What if we didn't have these idols? The idols that cause us to fight one another and cause us to break off relations with others. Think of it this way. Going back to that idea of you have a pastor has you for one hour a week, cable news has you for hours every single day. What would happen if you took time away from cable news to do something else? What if you took some of those hours to volunteer to help someone else or to put in the Bible study. And to be fair, this is more than just watching news. It could be anything. Vegging out in front of the TV, watching movies, reading complete junk, spending entire days obsessing over sports, all these different things that pull us away. And what if it wasn't even something that big, not even looking at hours? What if it was something smaller? What if it was just as simple as taking 15 minutes away from those things just to pray? I'll be honest. Amazing things can happen when we look at how we are spending our time. It wasn't that long ago. Every Saturday in college football season, I was pretty much unavailable because... I started my day watching College Game Day at 9 a.m., typically watching the stuff before that, before that show came on. I spent a good chunk of the afternoon into the evening watching football games, multiple football games. It was pretty much excessive when you think that for the fall season, I was essentially spending one-sixth of my week watching something. And then all the other time of catching up on the polls and reading all the other stuff. And I'll be honest, in the last two years, I really haven't watched much of any football. And I would say it's nice to have that time back. 
because I can do many other things with it. And that's a challenge we can all have of where these idols are in our lives, of what are they and what can we be doing instead. And that is where we need to remember that we should keep our faith in God. God should have that center point not an organization, not a person, because people fail us, organizations fail us, buildings fail us. God will not. God is always listening. God does act in this world, and God will act according to God's will. And it will be right, and it will be just, it will be good. We don't have the problems when we keep our faith in God. It's when the faith gets misplaced. Tony Evans tells a story about a kite. One day a kite was being flown by some kids and the kite said to itself, if only I could get rid of this string, I would be better. If the string wasn't holding me back, I could really fly. I could fly above the clouds. I could go as high and as far as I want. All I have to do is get rid of this string. This is what's holding me back. One day, that kite got its wish. One day, while being flown, the string broke. The kite thought, I'm finally free. I can go as high and as far as I want. Only that's not what happened. Anyone who knows kites knows that string is important, not just to hold in the kite. But it's a string that allows a kite to catch the wind. The kite didn't know that. So the kite fell to the ground. And suddenly he, the kite realized it wasn't the string holding him back. Because that's not what enabled him to do anything in the first place. It was something the kite could not see or fully understand that did. The point of it is don't place your trust always on what you can see and what your limited and perfect understanding leads you to think. Our faith should be in what is true and real in the universe. For us, it should be in God. Let us pray. Almighty God, in so many ways it's easier to be attracted to things we can see, to things we can interact with, to things we understand. But that is not your plan for us. For your plan for us is that we should have our faith fully in you and in your Son, Jesus Christ. Strengthen us and help us to keep our faith where it belongs. That even when we do not see, even when we do not understand, our faith will be in you. And you will deliver us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. This has been our pre-recorded sermon, but we do live stream the service every Sunday at 845 on the East Salem UMC Facebook page, and it stays there for a while afterwards. But until next time, I'm Pastor Dave, and may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.